you, George. This is Big Brother. George is now permitted to speak. Oh, thank God for that. Hello and welcome to Big Brother's Little Brother. It's day 35. It is 6.01. Coming up on today's show, I hope you've not forgotten him already. It's only Shree, everybody. <laughs> How are you doing, Shree? Oh, Looking slick, isn't he, ladies, huh? <laughs> Looking real nice. <laughs> and it's been 10 years since my next guest became the first British housemate to be given the boot for cheating. But how would he play the game a decade on? It's Nasty Nick Bateman. <laughs> Still booing ten years on. You're so bad, Nick. And we troll cyberspace with a great big internet net to bring you the best BB web action with Joe Coffee, everybody. <laughs> but before any of that, let's give Sky News a run for its money. It's BBLB News 25. BBLB News 25. 24 hour news and then some. Prepare to go out of your minds with hysteria. It's the short, sharp, stupid headlines, everybody. First up, when Halfwit suggested Chris explore new headspaces, I'm not sure this is what he had in mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's disgusting, isn't it? Uh, next up, super, uh, superhero Marcus sometimes wants to be a normal boy, just like everybody else. Marcus, strongest man? I guess so, yeah. Pigeonholed in that respect. Oh, it's a nightmare for him. So tough. Uh, and who needs teachers and education and that when Big Brother can teach you everything you need to know? New Zealand would be all right. <laughs> what do you keep doing? It's New Zealand. That, now, it's Chinese people are New Zealand, aren't they? No, good. Chinese people are New Zealand, aren't they? You couldn't make it up. Uh, now, on a more serious note, here are tonight's carefully selected stop stories. Uh, yesterday saw the beginning of the greatest show on earth, not Michael Jackson's memorial, but the house shopping task. At 7.26 p.m., Camp Cowboy Halfwit took aim at his glamorous assistant, and boy, what a name. Oh! Hole in one, ladies and gentlemen. Next up, after successfully knocking some sense in the dog face, it seems she and some of the others are beginning to warm to half with. So much so, at 11.06 p.m., he became initiated into the gang, everybody! I hope you knew he's chill. Well, he's being a self, you actually like him. Uh, he's not that bad. Oh, Feather. You actually look cool. Let's just have a look. Oh, yeah. Wow! You just need Starling, right? You look smart. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, looking yeah. real swish, man. Uh, and finally, Marcus's tell it as it is. It, Marcus's tell it as it is attitude is getting him into trouble again. At 1.12 p.m. today, Dogface confronted the big man about something a beloved Chris shouldn't really be saying about the one he loves. Marcus, why, what did Chris say why I'd go? Because I said, I don't think you'll go at all. And he said, well, you know, you don't know what people are thinking. They might think you're quiet. He said to me that he said that I'd go. Because, um, Who said? You, that I'd go because... Um, I've never I've never said that. Because um, I'm quiet. I've never said that. Because when you were on the bed, because he was on about, he said, oh, I think you, he thinks you, him, and Freddie will go. She's such a natural beauty, isn't she? <laughs> uh, and that's your daily dose of BBLB News 25, everybody. BBLB News 25, 24 hour news and then some. On Friday night, Shree became the latest housemate to be turfed out the house, but to be honest, I'm surprised if he remembers, not, remembers it, not because uh, he had such a big night out, but because his concentration and memory aren't as good as he thinks. Have a little look at this. <laughs> Hi, Ed. Nice to meet you. My name's Ed Cook. I'm a Grandmaster of Memory. Would it be fair to say that, um, that memory and concentration aren't necessarily your thing? Mm, my memory... Sorry? Everybody group has to dance, put their Yeah, but you're the, only one, who, you're the only one who gets distracted. Oh, that group is so poor. Just watch it. Don't pay attention to what other people are doing. Oh, f***. One, uh... 
Oh, no. You can't really concentrate on stuff. Did you listen to what I was saying to you? Go on. No, because you don't listen to anything anyone says. Okay. Good news is I've got a, a great technique which can help you remember stuff uh, perhaps more securely in, in difficult, stressful situations. Before I teach you that, though, I wouldn't mind uh, just evaluating your memory a little bit with a few little questions. OK. So if we could just take a walk down here, we're going to walk a couple of hundred yards, yeah. and uh, then we'll try and observe anything interesting which we walk past. And then I'm just going to see uh, whether, whether your concentration's all there. Definitely. Fantastic, let's go. <laughs> Try and uh, keep an eye on what's going on. I mean, do you remember seeing um, the shot with lots of little things outside? Uh, um, behind us, right? Um, well, it was over to our right, we had a little shop. Um, uh, there is a shop. Do you remember the name of the place outside which we met? We met outside that charity shop, do you remember? Yeah, yeah, there is a charity shop behind yeah, us. Yeah, do you remember uh, what the name of that was? No, I didn't pay attention to Oh, that. you didn't pay I'm attention. Sorry. Did you notice we, there was a drug shop? No, I just... It, it's, uh, it's behind you, Street. It's just, just here. Oh. Listen, we can... I'm sure we can look at some tips which can help you focus a little bit more, keep on task, and really kind of learn some information. Yeah, definitely. So if you have to learn a long list of objects, that can be difficult because they get into a big mess in your head. So instead I've got this technique where you take a familiar route somewhere in your home, place the objects you have to learn along that route at specific points. My university union bars. OK, the bar of the student yeah. union. OK, yeah. great. And when it comes to remembering them, you've just got to retrace that route in your imagination and all the objects will hopefully pop into your mind. So he's clearly got a problem, but fear not. Please welcome Grand Master of Memory, Ed Cook, everybody. <laughs> Ed, hello, sir. How are you doing? Good to meet you. You are a Grand Master of Memory. I am. How'd you get a title like that? Well, you've got to learn uh, a thousand-digit number in an hour. Whoa um, there, what? And you've got to learn a pack of cards in another two minutes. A thousand digits? Yeah, so it's about this long. Yeah? And what? And you just remember the sequence, and then yeah. you repeat it to somebody. It's extremely good company if uh, if you're bored. Right. Okay. Going to someone with like that. And then a pack of cards. A pack of cards. I can learn a pack of cards in 45 seconds. A shuffled deck of cards. Uh, it takes me about 45 seconds to rifle through them and learn them all in order. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that's pretty impressive, don't you? Yes. I, do, I think you're right to clap. I think you're right. I don't believe anybody out there can remember a pack of cards in 45 seconds. Uh, Shri, not so good on the memory, you. Yeah. <laughs> Always had a bad memory. No, I do have a really good memory, used to, uh, but after... Oh, <laughs> so just when you came on to Big Brother, yeah, then all of a sudden... It... No, 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 you, you need to realise, uh, different housemates and uh, no ring issue and a lot of... Uh... I know, it probably span you out, didn't it, mate? <laughs> Falling in love like that. Yeah. Yes, it is. Have you ever heard of that? Somebody, have you ever gone up against, you know, colleagues who used to have brilliant memories and then they've been in love and then all of a sudden they don't, they can't remember a damn thing? I haven't encountered that, but I imagine it could happen. Right, OK. Uh, do you think you can pretty much help anybody? When you met Sri, did you think, you know what, I, I can help this guy? Well, Even I mean... Even though you used to have an amazing memory. Well, uh, we did a little testing with Sri. It didn't work out that well. But then we, we talked about some techniques, and Sri actually, I think, is, he was getting his head around them, so I'm looking forward to... Did they help you? Yes, it is really impressive and uh, teach me very quick and... Uh, do, you want, do you want to put it to the test? Should we yeah, put it to the yeah, test, guys? Good yeah, good techniques. How about that? Come over here, Sri. Right, you get yourself behind there, mate. The pressure is on, ladies and gentlemen. You jump behind there. Uh, he will have to memorise 20 items. He'll then have 30 seconds to remember as many as he can. If he gets over 15, he'll win a mystery prize, everybody! Yeah. Ah, right, we've got the, uh, the conveyor belt has started. Your time starts now, please. Uh, first up, a pair of uh, stylish white underpants. Real nice in the bath. Uh, Debranded cheap cider, bubblegum sauce, a little bit of garlic. <laughs> Uh, causing a lot of problems in the house, remember that. Uh, some hair dye for you, Sri. Remember the ginger days? Looking good. Your old friend, an ice cream scoop. Oh, your true love, Noreen. Shouldn't forget that. A nice uh, knife and fork there. Your famous ice cream hat. I bet you've been missing that one. Marcus's hair. Lovely. Oh, oh it's an no. Elvis wig. Right. Uh, there's, uh, there's a diary room wall tile there. A skipping rope. Hours of fun in the house. A plate. Your famous sunglasses, Shri. Potatoes. Lovely memories. A fondue set, of course. No uh, generation game there. Uh, can what you just remember like this? Token. Uh, a cuddly toy, of course, wouldn't be complete without that. Uh, a, a hat from the old bamboo. And a shopping list. 
So there you go, time's up, that's all your item three. Come on out, mate. Uh, you park yourself over here, Ed. Uh, how do you think you've done? Yes, uh, quite easy to remember. But quite easy, <laughs> sounds confident. You think he's got what it takes, Ed? I, I think he's going to do it. OK, let's see if the Jedi has taught uh, young Luke here how to do it. Right. <laughs> OK, on your marks, uh, get set, start recalling. Picture of Noreen, oh, bamboo, uh, bubblegum sauce, garlic, uh, Marcus hair, and uh, skipping rope, uh, uh, cider of can, and uh, spoon and fork, uh, and my hair dye, so hair dye, uh, my oh, bamboo hat, hair dye. What else, what else, guys? Uh, uh, ice cream cap, ice cream cap, ice cream scoop, yeah. and bowl. Uh, 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 yeah. So you got to say it to me, mate. Sorry? Fondue set. Yeah, fondue set. Oh, and fondue set. International yeah. sign language yeah. for fondue set. A token. Yeah. Diary room, diamond cube. But finish, time's up, time's up, time's up. How many did we get? Yeah. Oh, I'm gutted. So close, huh? Can almost taste it. You only got 13, guys. Oh. Yeah? No, no mystery prize. Let's have a look at what he could have won, guys. <laughs> I don't need an ice cream maker. An ice cream maker. Ed, do you want to have a bash at it? Do you want the ice cream maker? Do I get to keep it? If yeah. I, oh. The master of memory. Sweet. Can we have another? Can we have another 30 seconds on the clock? Do it. Okay. There was a pair of pants. I think it was cider, some bubblegum things, some garlic. Uh, then there was a spoon, and then we had Norin, and then we had a knife and fork, and then there was an ice cream hat, and then some other amusing Elvis wig, and then there was a dining room tile and a skipping rope and a plate and some sunglasses and a potato and a fondue set and a token and a, uh, another amusing hat and a shopping list. Um, How on earth is he doing that, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> I, think he's, I think he's some kind oh. of wizard or something. Oh. Uh, lucky man. Uh, thank you very much, Three and Ed, everybody. <laughs> After the break, you can stay here, you can stay here, you can stay here, you can stay here. After the break, run for your lives. Uh, it's the most evil man in TV history. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let me tell you, you are right to be scared. Earlier on, I thought I saw him writing some names on a bit of paper. We'll see you in three. Back to BBLB, it is 6.16. Uh, we've got some breaking news for you. Siavash has just stated that he believes Noreen will be going topless for big bucks when she gets out of the Big Brother house. Oh. <laughs> uh, also, breaking news that Charlie and Lisa have been having a heart-to-heart -heart about Charlie's ex-fella from before when he came into the house. Uh, and uh, we've got a clip of Charlie now getting involved in the latest task direct from the house. Have a look at this. He failed. They failed that part of the task. I'm sorry. Uh, now, game plan paranoia has gripped the house. They're all blaming each other, but there's only one man responsible. He invented the Big Brother game plan. Let's have a reminder. Sorry, I have to say it, Nick, but I'm very disappointed in yourself. I'm quite positive and got evidence uh, that you're plotting a, pl a very dirty plan on everybody in here to vote against each other and steer it divert from you. What's your game? What are you playing at? What's your motive for it, eh? Craig, you've made a number of wild accusations yeah. over the over the last yeah. couple of weeks. Is what he's saying about you showing people names? Is that, is that true? true? No, it's not. Oh, you so have. You have. have. You've shown me names. And you've shown me names. You are seriously writing down names, Nick, and showing people names. That's what you're doing. Were you showing people names? Uh, are you still very disappointed in yourself? Uh, I think a few names, a bit of paper, it's, it's not as bad as, uh, as it looked. These days, they're far worse to each other and they backstab far much. I mean, it's was... nasty Nick, everybody! <laughs> <laughs> they're still booing you, man. That's got to be tough. Uh, it's, yeah, it's fine. A it's... decade on. That's better to be booed than not booed, I think. Yeah, but, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> I'd probably <laughs> argue against I can do without the booze. Uh, any regrets at all, Nick? No, I think uh, Big Brother's allowed me to do some things that I wouldn't have done. I've had some great times. I, you know, was one of 120 people in yeah. this country that have done it. One of 1,000 in the world to do something like Big Brother, and I think 
anyone who had the chance to do it would do it. So okay. I, I'm glad Part I did Part of it. a very special bunch, Nick. Oh, of course. Well, some uh, of us are, yeah. Yeah, more special than others. Uh, now, when, when you first went in there, obviously it was the first one, you had no idea. Why did you feel kind of instinctively that you needed a game plan? Well, you know, it had a prize, and for 10 weeks of work, £70,000 was a lot of money. And 10 it's years ago, going, yeah. it was a hell of a lot. So I thought, actually, why not have a game plan? Why not try and win it? It was supposed to be a game show. Do you think you were, you were the only one in there with, with a game plan? Oh, every, every person has a game show. Everyone had it in our house, but when I started to play the game, I suddenly realised that, you know, it wasn't a self-help workshop, it wasn't a tea party, it was a game show. And people have to... But people forget, Nick. Yeah, people right? forget it's a game show. It's a competition. They're out there. You should be trying yeah. to win money, Nick, all right? Oh. Haven't got any time for losers. Uh, let's have a look. There's lots of chat about game plans this week. Let's have a look at it. Everybody's got a game plan. I will not respect anyone in this house to say they don't have a game plan. If anyone asks me, hell yes, I have a game plan. Does anyone think anyone has a game plan? Yet? My game plan. I've never seen a game plan. Half of it. Just think, I don't know, he's, he's got a game plan. I don't want to be game planning, but does that mean I should not do something that I want to do anyway? He starts thinking that there's game plans and people are plotting and scheming against him. Marcus has got a game plan. What did I want me to do? What do I want to do? Lisa is Lisa. She is still scheming. We both knew she was setting me up. You're getting paranoid, Freddie? What Meanings. does game plan mean? Exactly. Right, we have our tactics table here. Talk us through how you would take on the housemates if we put nasty Nick back in there. He's going through the entrance. Nick, take over. OK, for example, say if we want to get rid of Marcus and Rodrigo. We want OK, to, uh, those Marcus, two who's, who's quite a big kind of alpha in the house, all yeah. right? You want to bash him out of the way first. Yeah, the wolf and the, the nice boy. Yeah. So what you do first is you go over here and say to these guys, look, I thought you thought Rodrigo and Marcus were really nice. In fact, they've been backstabbing you all week. And, and such they hate a you weasel. All. <laughs> He's such a weasel. So they go, let's vote them out. So next week, they're up for eviction, one of them goes. Then right, the next okay. week, you go along and say, look, that Rodrigo, he really, he'd said at first he really did be your best friend, but in fact, he really hates you. And so they go, we'll, we'll, we'll vote him out. Now, these two here... Not what a nightmare is. <laughs> what a nightmare. But this is how it goes. With right. Halfwit, you say, look... Your dad's just wrong, big brother. You'll lose your inheritance unless you leave the house. He's, he, go, he's going to be out in a heartbeat. So he, he jumps over the wall. Yeah. Lovely Lisa, who's got an opinion about everything. She's, she's the kind of... But she is the boss of the house. So how are you going to deal with that? You've got to be very careful. It's very the easy. Kingpin. You just say, you know, big brother's been talking to me in a diary room. Um, I hear there's a job for you on the outside. Right, I, sh okay. I shouldn't like working. She, she will fly she's, off. She's going to scarf her, right? Okay. Scarf her. Then the rest implode and they all die in a horrible accident in the pool. No, no, we don't want that. We don't want that. We don't want that, Nick, Nick, Nick. Uh, right, OK, so essentially we just... And then, come on, then, what are we going to do with these guys? Well, these guys, because there are, there are four people left, five people left, and me, then obviously the people that upset each other in the house, the big characters will go, because generally... He doesn't have a game. He basically just turns everybody against each other. That's how it works with Nick. Well, that's how it works. But don't forget, most people who end up in the final are the dullest people because they've done nothing to offend anyone. If they just sit there and do, and do nothing. Nothing dull over here. Nasty Nick Bateman, everybody. Give him a big round of applause. Game plan or no game plan, one housemate will be evicted on Friday night. Who goes? It's up to you. Get your little bits of paper out right now. <laughs> To evict Charlie, call 09016161604. To evict Dogface, call 09016161615. To evict Halfwick, call 09016161605. To evict Chris, call 09016161607. To Vic Marcus, call 09016161609. Calls cost 35p from a BT landline. Other networks may vary. Mobiles will cost considerably more. Details and terms at channel4.com forward slash big brother. Voting closes in Friday's eviction show. Web time, everyone. And here to unzip my files is big brother <laughs> online editor Joe Coffey, everybody. Hello, Hello. Joe. Joe, we've had a very special guest uh, running the web today, am I correct? We've had a lovely guest. Can I yeah. just say, no nasty, this guy is lovely. You, yeah. Did you enjoy it, Nick? I loved it. Uh, all the people on the web love this show. They love how Big Brother's going. Of course going. they do. They've got ears, eyes and ears, don't they? It's fantastic. Hopefully. Yeah. Right, OK, Joe, 
Uh, talk us through what you've been seeing on the web, darling. Well, I've got some fantastic things coming this week. We've got a couple of jokers, uh, former cameramen, right. they're called Him and Me TV, and they've done a little clip of what Marcus should be doing when he comes outside the right, house. Let's have a little look at that. Look. Brand new to BB Records, Marcus plays all the hits on his recorder. <laughs> With classics such as Poker Face. Marcus is the Wolverine Piper by now. Now that's what I call piping. <laughs> Amazing. That poker face rendition was treat. real good. Huh? <laughs> I hope we can get hold of that CD. Yeah. What else have you seen on the web, darling? Well, loads of celeb tweets as ever. You can't stop those celebrities tweeting. Uh, David Schneider yeah. uh, says, judging from the reaction in the house, Halfwit will make a brilliant prime minister. He's absolutely hated. Oh, very not nice. nice, not nice. He's kind of part of the cool gang now, Dave. Yeah. He's got shaved head now. Um, Andy Peters says, lots of BB chat, yeah. Um, I think Chris should go and he says he might even vote. So a lot of people over it going, yes, yes, yes. yes. Do, do we want Chris to go? Yeah. We've had uh, enough of it. It's a mixed opinion, yeah. mixed opinion. Really? All right. Who do you think is going to go on Friday then? Well, I don't know. I mean, we've been looking at various polls as well. So Digital right. Spy of Listen, we've got to finish up, I'm afraid. Oh. Uh, that's <laughs> all for today. Thanks to all my guests. I'll be back tomorrow at 6 on E4 when I'll be joined by Rick Edwards and Gracie from BB7. Don't forget to watch the main show tonight, 9 o'clock on Channel 4. We will see you tomorrow. Take care. <laughs>